This is a Haas avocado. This is a Haas avocado seed. Did you know that if you plant this Haas avocado seed, it will not give you a tree that produces Haas avocados? Similarly, this Walden seed will not give you a tree that produces Walden avocados. This seed from a Hall avocado will not grow a tree that gives Hall fruit. And by now you see where this is heading. The seed from a Monroe avocado will not give you a tree that grows Monroe avocados. In fact, that's true for every variety of avocado and every one of these seeds because avocados do not grow true to seed. Growing true or true from seed or true to seed means that when you plant the seed from a piece of fruit that you ate, the resulting tree will produce fruit identical to the fruit that you ate or if not identical, very, very similar. Peaches, for example, grow true to seed. So if you eat a peach and take the pit and plant it in the ground, about 10 to 12 years later, you'll have a tree that produces peaches that taste just like the one you ate. Certain types of citrus also grow true to seed, such as key limes or grapefruit. If you eat a key lime and you plant some seeds from it, the resulting key lime trees or plants will give you key limes that taste exactly like the one that gave you the seeds in the first place. With avocados, on the other hand, if you save your seed and plant it in soil, you'll get an avocado tree. And that avocado tree eventually will produce fruit, but that fruit will not taste anything like the fruit from which the seed came. In fact, it's statistically unlikely that the fruit will even taste good at all. Now, a lot of you folks from up north will know what I'm talking about when I say crab apples, right? Do you have anybody that's got a crab apple tree in the neighborhood? Apples, like avocados, don't grow true to seed. Where I grew up in Scranton, Pennsylvania, there were a lot of people who had crab apple trees in the yard. They were absolutely disgusting. They looked gnarly. They were inedible. They would fall on the ground and rot. They'd make the sidewalk slippery. They'd make the road slippery. They were actually a traffic hazard. And when they started to rot on the road and the sidewalks, they stunk. They reeked. They, the apples were full of worms. They were just a mess. And I would always wonder, like, why did someone plant a crab apple tree? Why didn't they plant an apple tree that gives good tasting fruit? Well, now I know the answer. They didn't understand that apples don't grow true from seed. So they ate an apple, they spit out the seeds, they planted those seeds, they germinated a little seedling. They went out in the yard, planted their apple tree with the hopes they were gonna have some nice juicy apples in a few years. And what resulted instead was a crab apple tree. With apples, they estimate that for every 80,000 trees grown from seed, you will get one tree that produces good tasting fruit. So those Macintosh apples you love, or those Granny Smiths, or those Golden Delicious, they were one in 80,000 anomalies. And for avocados, they say that rate is about one in 10,000. So 9,999 avocado trees produced yucky fruit until this lucky haul was grown. Someone tasted it, said that tastes good. They let other people taste it. Those other people said that tastes good. So they went and they got a patent for it and they named it Hall. Then 9,999 more trees were grown and they produced yucky fruit. And then this lucky Monroe popped out of a tree. Someone tasted it, he liked it. Other people tasted it, they liked it. It was a consistent grower. The trees produced a, a, a high yield. So they took it, they patented it and they named it Monroe. Then you got this guy here, the Haas. The Haas tree was actually planted from seed and Rudolf Haas, the guy that planted it, tried to graft onto that seedling. The graft failed, and he just let the tree grow from seed anyhow. The resulting fruit was one of these, a Haas. He wanted to cut the tree down, but his daughter loved the taste of the avocado so much, she convinced him to keep the tree up. Other people tasted his fruit, they liked it, he patented it, he sold the patent for $5,000, and to this day, four billion of these are eaten per year. It is a $2 billion industry, the avocado industry. I bring this up because a lot of people are of the mistaken notion that if you plant the seed from a Haas avocado, you're gonna get a Haas avocado tree, and that's not true. But it's not a foolish notion. It's simply a mistaken notion, but it's very logical to expect that if I eat a piece of fruit and it gives me this seed, if I put this seed in the ground, I will get more of that fruit. 
Unfortunately, that's not true for avocados. Let's use candy to explain why. Let's pretend that this avocado tree produces a fruit that tastes like Skittles. And this tree produces a fruit that tastes like caramel candy. And this guy here produces a fruit that tastes like wint o green lifesavers. Which incidentally, you should try this. Go in a dark room, like a pitch black room in the middle of the night and stand in front of a mirror and put one of these in your mouth and crunch down on it with your mouth open, you'll see green sparks. So here we have a fruit that tastes like Skittles. That might be appealing to some people. Here we have a fruit that tastes like caramel. That also might be appealing to some people. And here we have a fruit that tastes like Winto Green Lifesavers, which also might be appealing to some people. So somewhere along the line, 10,000 trees were planted. A tree spit out avocados that tasted like Skittles. People loved them and they named it the Skittle Avocado. Same thing for caramel, same thing for Winto Green. Then eventually this Winto Green Avocado grew a piece of fruit. Someone picked the piece of fruit, they ate it, it tasted like delicious Winto Green Lifesaver. They set aside the seed. They took that seed, they put it into soil, and 10 years later, they have a mature avocado tree. That avocado tree produced a piece of fruit that even the squirrels wouldn't eat. The squirrels took a couple of bites and rejected this piece of fruit. Why? Because the piece of fruit tasted disgusting. Because just like human beings, the seed that was planted had to be created from two sets of DNA. It had to be created with pollen from a male flower, which pollinated a female flower. Which means that the seed contains the attributes of a father tree and a mother tree. In this case, this tree contains the attributes of the tree that gives you caramel and the tree that gives you winto green. Caramel, delicious. Winto green, delicious. Winto green flavored caramel, not so much. You see, avocado trees are a lot like humans. You have some of the attributes of your father, some of the attributes of your mother, but you're not an identical clone of either. And furthermore, you're not an identical clone of your siblings. So not only will each of these seeds not grow me a tree identical to the mother tree, every single one of these trees is going to grow me a genetically unique organism that's never been grown before. You'll wind up with fruit that tastes a lot like winto green flavored caramel or caramel flavored winto green or winto green flavored caramel with skittles now maybe you're a clint eastwood fan maybe you're feeling lucky remember what i told you one in ten thousand times you'll have an avocado tree that produces avocados that tastes like peanut butter and maybe not too far away from it is a tree that gives you avocados that taste like chocolate and one day a honeybee goes out and he gets pollen from the male flowers of your peanut butter tasting fruit. And he flies over to the female flowers of your chocolate tasting fruit. They fall in love. They combine their DNA to produce a seed. You plant that seed and you grow a tree. And that tree gives you a piece of fruit that combines the chocolate from the female flower and the peanut butter from the male flower. And if that happens, you have created for yourself a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup Avocado. Congratulations, you hit the 1 in 10,000 lottery. And as those of you who follow this channel know, the way we get around this problem is grafting. I'm holding in my hand a Donny Avocado. You see right here is the graft. So from the seed up, this was planted... A seed was planted and it grew me this little trunk which was then clipped and a clipping from a Donny avocado tree out in a grove was taken and inserted into here. At that point the tree that was planted from seed stops growing upwards. It still grows roots under the ground but the Donny from the donor tree continues to grow upward. And so now I have a seed that would give me one of these mutt blends if it grew to fruit. But inserted into that 
I've got now a pure, in this case, Donny avocado. So if I wanted avocados that tasted like Skittles, I go out into the grove and I take a clipping from the tree that gives me avocados that taste like Skittles and I stick it inside a tree grown from seed and in about three to four years, I get avocados that taste like Skittles. Now, if you're not feeling lucky and you want a sure thing, go to guacfarm.com, G-U-A-C-F-A-R-M.com. If you don't want to go through all this process and wait 10 years to find out if you hit the one in 10,000 odds, just order one of our trees. They come already grafted and ready to go. Or if you don't want to grow a tree and you want to just skip right to the eating, order a 10 pound box of fruit. Or if you've already produced a tree from seed with the expectation that it would give you good fruit, now you understand you need to graft it, we actually sell the cuttings or scions for you to graft onto your seed grown seedling. And if none of that sounds appealing and you just want to look cool in a really nice t-shirt, we got those out there as well. Again, that's guacfarm.com, G-U-A-C-F-A-R-M.com. So we're going to go in the house and eat up all this candy. While we're doing that, you go out to guacfarm.com and I will see you on the next video. <laughs>